What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupCentrals.com back with another SketchUp tool tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a bunch of different tips that you can use in order to quickly create copies of objects inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to model out kind of like a high rise building that looks a little bit more like a physical wood model. So I may talk more about that in the future, but one thing I'm finding myself doing a lot of when I'm doing this is I'm creating a lot of copies of repeating components. And so what I wanna do is first off, I wanna talk about the repeating components themselves. So for example, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to copy railings that kind of go around the outside of this building that cover a certain length, right? So this is gonna run between these concrete columns right here, and what I'm doing is I'm creating copies. And so the first thing I wanna know is I'm not going in and modeling this over and over again. So when something repeats, you wanna create a copy of it. So you don't wanna come in here and just uh, remodel this over and over and over again. What you wanna do instead is you wanna model it once, and then anywhere where you can reuse it, you wanna make it a component and do that. So what I've done is I've taken this whole thing, and we can look at it in the outliner, but basically what I've done is I've taken my vertical railing and my balcony rails and I've put them together in a component called rail. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reuse this. So, um, and one thing you could do is you could probably label it with the length. So in this case, for example, this rail is gonna be 24 feet long. So what you might do is you might call this 24 foot long rail, something like that. So that's the first thing is if something repeats, don't remodel it. Um, we're trying to avoid remodeling. But then the next thing is I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna activate the M, or I'm gonna activate the move tool by tapping the M key. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this corner right here. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But for right now, I wanna click on this corner. We'll notice how when I click on this corner, and notice that I'm single clicking and I move my mouse, this is moving the object that I had selected. Well, that's not what I want. What I want instead is I wanna tap the control key in order to go into copy mode. So notice how as soon as I tap control on my keyboard, that's gonna allow me to create a copy. Well, then I can move my mouse over here and I can click again in order to place this. So notice what that allowed me to do is that allowed me to place this copy right here. Well now, and I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my outliner because um, I don't want that um, updating dynamically in here. So now the next tip is you might've noticed I didn't click directly on my rail. So when I do this, what I really want is I want a simple inference point that I can find every time, right? And so if I try to create a copy in here and then I move my mouse over here, like it's fairly easy to get this to align, but it can kind of jump around and it's easy to kind of like miss a little bit because you're trying to click on a line um, instead of on a point. Well, what I'll do instead is remember with the move tool, you can set a base point that's off of your object. So um, what I can do is I can activate the move tool. Well, when I create my copy using the move tool, I don't have to click on this corner or a corner that's on my object. I can set a base point to this corner right here. Well, I find this corner to be a much easier inference point than this one. So what I would do is I would click on the corner of this column. Then I would tap the control key. Then I would move my mouse and just click on the corner of this column right here. So that gives me a very simple, basic inference point that I can find every single time. And so now I wanna talk about a way that I can turn this corner. And so for now, for now, let's go ahead and let's create our other corner and put it on this corner right here. But now what I need to do is turn this corner. And so there's a couple different ways that I could do this. So one way that you could do this, and it's definitely a valid way, is you could take this and just use the move tool in copy mode and then rotate it right here. So just use the rotate tool in order to place that. That works absolutely fine, no issue with that whatsoever. But there's another way you could do this if you wanted to. You could use the rotate tool in copy mode just by tapping the Q key. And so the rotate tool works in copy mode the same way that the uh, move tool in copy mode works. So in this case, what I would do is I would tap the Q key with this selected. I would tap the up arrow key to lock this to the blue axis. And I would click here to set this as a base point. Well, then I could come over here and click on this point and move my mouse. Well, notice how that's rotating this. Well, what I might do instead is I might just tap the control key. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna put me in copy mode with my move tool or with my rotate tool. So now if 
I click again to set this point, I can place this right here. And then one thing you might have noticed about this is it's not in the right location because we rotated it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the scale tool and I'm just gonna scale it to negative one. And notice how that puts that right in the right place. So not necessarily faster for everyone, but for me, it is a lot faster. It fits inside of my workflow. Um, that, that's just how it works for me. You don't have to do it that way, but you definitely can. Then another tip we can use in here is let's talk about making multiple copies. So if you notice, these columns are all on a grid, right? Well, since they're on a grid, that means that they all have equal spacing. So I set my building up this way. But what I wanna do now is I wanna use the move tool in copy mode, but I wanna create multiple copies at once. So the way that I would do that is I would just tap the M key, tap control to go into copy mode, and then I would single click, move my mouse, and click again. And so once I've done that, I don't wanna click on anything else, right? I'm gonna leave this tool active. Well, what if you leave the tool active, and if this doesn't work, you probably click somewhere. Um, but if you leave the tool active and don't click on anything, you can type in star and then a number of copies. So in this case, I'm gonna type in star three, and I'm gonna hit the enter key. Well, what that does is that creates three copies um, at the spacing that I created. So what that did is instead of creating one copy, it created two additional copies. And notice how I can type in a different number, like times five and hit the enter key, or times two and hit the enter key, back to times three and hit the enter key. So what you can do is you can use this to quickly create arrays of copies. And so if I was to come back in here and I was just to finish this off, probably what I would do is I would do something that would look a little bit like this, All right? So I would come in here, I would scale this, to negative one, I'd use the move tool in copy mode, I'd type in times six and hit the enter key. And then I would come over here and just do the same thing. So instead of me having to come in here and model these out over and over again, what I can do is I can just really quickly use the tools inside of SketchUp um, in order to create copies. And honestly, this is one of the things I think that really is really makes SketchUp the easiest to use. So there are some other tools that have like array tools and stuff like this, but this just gets really intuitive once you kind of figure that out. All right, so then the other thing I would recommend, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select everything on this layer. So we're gonna select all of these columns. We're gonna select all of these rails and we're gonna select our slab is I would recommend um, creating these objects. And probably what I want is I want this slab to be down here, actually. So I'm gonna take the slab, put it down here, and then I'm just gonna select all of these objects right here. And if you have something that repeats, kind of like this, a lot of the time my recommendation would be to create a component with those objects. So what I would do is I would just make this a component and I would just call this whatever, levels three through seven. So right here. So let's say you were going to have levels that were going to look like this um, every time. What I could do then is I could just use the move tool in copy mode to create copies of this over and over again. So if this was levels three through seven, we would need three, four. So we would type in times three and hit the enter key. And what that allows me to do is that allows me to really quickly create the copies of this object right here. Well, then if we end up doing something different, maybe on the ends. So for example, over here, let's say that we don't have rails anymore. Let's say we have something other than rails. Well, notice how if I make a change and let's say we had something, we'll call it maybe an architectural feature. So something like, we'll just call it some vertical screening, for example. Um, so let's say this went, it's had like a six inch gap and then a six inch strip. with maybe like a one inch thickness. And then I could go ahead and I could make that a component and just call this vertical member. And so notice how if I make these changes in here, what's happening is this is getting reflected across the different components. So I'm gonna type in like a value of times 10 or times 20. Notice how I can use that, um, 
that array function in order to quickly try different sets of spacing in here in order to add these. So this is definitely a way that you could do this. Um, the other way that you could do this though, which is another great tip for the move tool and copy mode is let's say, first of all, I'm gonna move this off of my wall a little bit. So I'm gonna move this so it's out here. And then I'm just going to move this down so that this is kind of an uninterrupted feature on each level. But let's say that you didn't want to guess on your spacing here. Let's say you wanted to create these copies equally spaced between a couple different points. Well, what you could do is you could set an endpoint and then use the divide key in order to create copies equally spaced between two points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into copy mode like we've talked about before, and I'm gonna create a copy that aligns, we'll call it right here. Um, I should probably measure it, but it's okay for what we're doing right here. So what I've done is I've created a copy right here. Well, now if I type the forward slash and then a number of copies, so if I type in like five, it's gonna create five equally spaced copies between this object and the point that I set over here. If I was to type in divided by 15, it's gonna create 15 copies, or divided by 18, it'd create 18. So what you could do is you could use this in order to create equally spaced copies of an object between points in here. So what that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to really quickly create these copies. Or in this case, since this is outboard of my structure, what I might do is I might align this with my endpoint over here and we could assume that this is gonna run from floor to floor. So I could just create a copy all the way across over here. And then type in, we'll say divided by 100. Well, you can see that what I could do is I could quickly create this screening on the end using these components and the move tool in order to quickly make that adjustment. So that's some practical tips for creating copies of objects inside of SketchUp. I will link to some related videos on this page as well. But if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.